Hello and welcome again. Hope all is well with you and your family. Today we have a special session for you. We're going to have a community conversation with a community author. Hope to sit back and enjoy. Today our special guest is, I'll let her introduce herself. Hello everyone, my name is Jacqueline Goodrum. That's Miss Goodrum, a community author. Thanks for joining, joining us today. You're welcome and thank you for having me. Thank you. Just want to find out a little bit about you. What is your profession? I'm an early childhood educator. Excellent, excellent. How long have you been in that profession? About 17 years. Oh, wow. So you're a pro at it, basically. I like to call myself the modern day Harry Tubman when it comes okay. to childhood education. I, like I tell that. people I don't have a shotgun, but the knowledge I have, I give it to the babies. Wonderful, wonderful. And what community do you reside in? East Cleveland. Great, yes. great. Um, please tell us about some of your hobbies. Um, I like to dance. I like to sing. I like to make uh, dolls. And I like to write. Writing. That takes us right into why we're here today. Miss Goodrum has written a book. So we're going to share some of the information about that book with you today. And perhaps encourage some of our other um, residents out there to become writers as well. Uh, Ms. Goodrum, please tell us the title of your book. The title of the book is called My Mother St. Jane and the Longest Day of Winter. Wow, that's a long title. Can you elaborate on us and tell us how you came up with that particular title? Um, I'm number eight out of ten. And so my mom was a minister. And uh, my mother, we were very close. We did a lot of civil rights activities and stuff together. So when my mom died, I got angry with God you know, and tried to commit suicide. And so that's why I call it my longest day of winter. Yeah. Wow, oh wow. And most people, some people write, this is truly a true story, yes. where she shared some of her personal experiences with the world, basically. And that's always a good thing. That's always a good thing. Now tell us how you got started with writing your book. I was in church one Sunday, and a minister uh, said, there's three people in here that used to write I want you to stand up. And I stood up. Another lady stood up and her daughter. He walked over to me and he said, Jackie, uh, God wants to know why you stopped writing. And at that time, my mother was in a hospital with tubes all in her. And I was speechless. I just said, I don't know. And then he told me, he said, well, God said he wants you to write a book. So my response was, well, you must be mistaken. My sister, who has a PhD, it's 10 of us, she asked all of us to write a chapter about our life, and she was going to put it together for a book. So I told him, well, you must be mistaken. My sister with the PhD wants to write the book. He said, that's fine, but God said you. <laughs> you know. So you have a PhD in some teaching and skills as well. Everybody does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell us a little bit about how long it took you to put the information, to get the book together, and to actually get it in print. Well, the first time I was told about the book was February of 2005. It took me July of 2008 to pick up a pencil the very first time to even try to do something because I was stuck. My mind was stuck on seeing my mother with all those tubes in her. And I couldn't, do it. I couldn't do it. And then what happened was, on three other different occasions, I was in the church. And so this one, it was getting ready to be New Year's. And the minister looked at me. I was in the back. And he said, Jackie, come here. And he did like this. I'm hearing these pages flipping. He said, God said, you're supposed to be writing a book. And then he told me, he said, whenever you write that book, I want you to find me. I don't care where I am because I want the first copy. And then he told me about the promise that God gave me about the book. And so that's when I said, well, God, where do I start? Okay, okay. So now, when, when you, when talking about your writing techniques, did you have a special time, a quiet place? Did you find that you um, wrote more at night, in the morning, on the weekends, or sometimes, in a closet, or where? Well, some, Share a little bit. Sometimes in, in, in the house, um, sometimes in the evening. Sometimes I would be asleep, and then the Lord would wake me up. And I remember one time I woke up, went to use the bathroom to come back and write, and the minister who told me about the prophecy happened to call me on the phone. He said, how are you coming along with your book? I told him, I said, I just, God just woke me up and, and told me he got another chapter from me. Okay. Yes. Okay. So how long did it take you to complete the book? It took me from the very first time I was told five years. 
-hmm. to actually write the book five years. Nevertheless, you got it done. Yes. You got yes, it yes. done. Can you share some of the titles of the chapters in the book? So uh, okay, okay. But some of the some of the some of the chapters are in the beginning, reminiscing laughter, the fruit yielding its seed, favor, calm before the storm. Bertha's DNA, stress under confrontation, my longest day of winter. Oh my goodness. My 40 day wilderness. Oh, you covered a lot of yes, areas. Yes, 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 yes. Those are some of the things when I'm deciding if I'm gonna read a book, I look at the title and then I look at some of the chapter information. And okay. Then I have a, like a words, words for mom out of the pulpit. And then I have the reason why I, the reason why I wrote the book things like that. That's great, great. Now share a little bit, let's start at the beginning and then we'll just glide on through um, this wonderful book. Tell me how the book starts off the setting. Well, the book starts off with me uh, talking about um, as a young girl, you know, how we had to, uh, before we walked out the house, we had to pray before we went to school every day. So basically a ritual or something that you do to get your day started. Yes. 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 And I talked about being number eight out of ten, you know, what type of um, mom my mother was and how she raised us. And, you know, to, uh, there's a tribute to her when we gave her a um, past appreciation and things like that. And um, to talk about... Um, my grandmother, my grandmother was a school teacher in, in here. Oh, wow. I have her original letter that she wrote. My grandmother was born in 1892. Oh my she wrote goodness. a letter when she history. was 80, She wrote a letter when she was 87 years old about her history as a teacher, and I have that in the book. So you were destined to be <laughs> in the in field of education. Yeah, it's yeah, in yeah. your DNA. In DNA. That's yes. good to know. Yes. That's yes. good to know. So now flowing to the meat of the book, the middle of the book. Can you tell me a little bit about What's going on in the middle of the book? In the middle of the book, I'm talking about my experience. Um, when I was in my 40-day wilderness. Okay, okay. That's the chapter that covers your 40-day wilderness. And, can, and, and when you say 40-day wilderness, what do you mean? Can you just briefly describe, give me a line, um, what did you mean by that? I was in a suicidal state. Okay, okay. So that's some good and personal information and you bypassed that and moved forward. And that's just um, very interesting and very good because we often have obstacles in our life and we, we overcome all the time. So kudos to yes. you as well. Um, so how does the book, how do you finalize and sum everything up in this particular book? Well, um, I went to Arizona to visit my son, and he took me to a, a place called Apache Junction. Okay. And it was like, I, it was like when you hear about the Valley of the Dry Bones. There, it, it was so I, I knew it was God because there were actually like looked like little bones all around this place. And I and I was like, Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday to a new life! Okay. okay. And I and I was standing here like this, mm -hmm. you know, and just thanking God and um and how God brought me out of it. So it was a new chapter yes. in your life. New chapter and that's life. one of the wonderful things about writing a book. It helps us then to internalize yes. what we need to do and how we move forward. Yes. Okay, that's good information. Now, for someone who's interested in becoming a community author and writing a book, do you have some brief suggestions for them? Um, well, you know, you can go online and it, 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 um, Go online, you know, when you Google them how to write a book, start to write a book. I was fortunate uh, because one of the persons that used to work here at the library. Libraries. My, my, my uncle, my uncle in Washington, D.C. Was, uh, was writing my book for me, you know, but he got sick and he passed away. So I'm at the library one day upstairs in the computer lab okay. and I was the only one in there and Miss Dorothy Greer was sitting there. And something just told me to ask her, I said, excuse me. Um, I'm trying to write a book and do you know how to put it together and she said yes and so she started helping me and you know and she she charged me and I paid her and she 
Okay. That's good information. So, do you feel that libraries during the COVID-19 are just as essential as they've always been, or do you find that they're more essential now as far as education, writing, and literacy based on the COVID-19? I think it's more essential. More essential. More essential. Would you care to elaborate on that? Um, a lot of people, you know, have taken, like, some people have been taking the libraries for granted. Uh, but the libraries are in the community because we need the information that's here, that's, that's always been here, that's available. And so now that this COVID-19 has come, well, you just can't, and when you need something, well, how can I get it? So it's like, you know, I really need this. But it's been here all the time, so now it's waking people up to think, hey, it's more viable than what I thought it was, you know. Mm -hmm. And I can't just be lackadaisical in it because I, yeah, it's needed, it's needed. Great, great. Well, you've shared some wonderful information with us today, Jacqueline Goodra. And I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to share your information with us. Thank you. Hope all is well and be safe. Thank you.